we all know NBFCs have been doing well. You just have to look at the last quarterly numbers. Uh, you know, but the pace of growth for NBFCs has been twice uh, of, of that of banks. Uh, you know, customer bases have largely normalized across NBFCs. Asset quality seems to be under control. Uh, and uh, there seems to be very, very few red flags. Uh, but what we intend to do is to kind of look beyond a little bit uh, from the here and now and look at uh, and try and gaze into the future, medium to long term. Uh, so I'll sort of uh, look at just three or four topics here and then we'll kind of go back and forth with the guests. Uh, we look at uh, the regulatory landscape. Uh, is regulation uh, sort of supportive enough? Is it hurting? Is it helping for NBFCs? The business model of NBFCs, we look at the credit cycle, where they are, where we are there. We look at the liability side of the business, which is uh, cost of funding. Uh, and then I'll sort of uh, wrap it up with the digital push and uh, what, how that is playing uh, up uh, across uh, NBFCs. So without further ado, let me welcome in our uh, panel. Uh, Mr. Umesh Revankar is uh, head of uh, Sridham Finance. Uh, Mr. Revankar, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Ramesh Ayer is Vice Chairman and Managing Director at Mahindra Finance, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Rajiv Sabarwal is uh, Head of uh, Tata Capital, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jairam Sridharan is Managing Director at Pyramal Finance, sir. Thank you very much. And Alok Agarwal is CEO, Muthut Home Finance. Alok, thanks very much. Uh, you know, the panel here, by the way, between them represents uh, 5 lakh crores worth of assets under management. Almost 5 lakh crores of assets under management. So, as I said, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, uh, you'll, you'll get the entire sort of spectrum of NBFCs and business models. So let's, without uh, sort of waiting any further, look at the first topic, which is the regulatory regime. Uh, you know, one of the things which uh, we used to talk about is the regulatory arbitrage between NBFCs and banks. Uh, has that kind of gone away now for NBFCs? The Reserve Bank of India, the regulator, has tightened uh, you know, norms for NBFCs to be at par with banks, especially on NPA recognition, asset quality, etc. So I want to sort of uh, take up that first. Uh, Mr. Ayer, I want to st start by asking you, what is your view? Uh, and, and, yeah, I mean, is that helping or is it starting to hurt a little bit? So I think, uh, you know, all through the day you would have had panel where you would have heard what they cannot do. And NBFC exactly do what others say they cannot do. Right? And when we do that, Obviously, you will be regulated little more than what was required. But I think it's always been a misnomer, I guess, that when people say, oh, the arbitrage is kind of shrunk and whatever else. And we've been here in this industry for too long. And I'm not too sure that there were too many areas of gap that we were benefited by. NBFC, by practice, were flexible model. And the flexibility was both in choosing a customer and taking a formal credit approach and lending, and then cover it up by through a better recovery process. That was a simple model that it was. Right? And if there was any, if at all, could have been probably on the liability side. But the truth is that when regulation just come out with the new requirement, I think it's futile that we start debating, you know, is this right, is this wrong? It's better to look at how do you put it in your business model and revisit your model and then it becomes an acceptable practice. You began by saying, Mr. Ayer, uh, what NBCs were created for, which is to, to be able to do uh, what banks could not do or were not willing to do. Yeah, I mean, so in that there was sense, one question asked in the previous panel, right? That there are people who want 1,000 rupee loan or a 2,000 rupee loan or whatever else, and they were not probably able to get, and the rate of interest was very high or whatever. I think one should never look at it from one line item perspective. One should look at it collectively. If somebody has got a dire need of a money and he is not getting it, you are meeting that requirement, then the cost of interest doesn't play a role there. The purpose plays the role, right? So I think that's the way the NBFC models have been built. No, so, so therefore, I feel that more regulation is always welcome. It only makes the business more stronger. I'll give you one very quick example. When we started the business, NPA was 365 days norm. Hmm move to 180-day norm, move to 90-day norm. It's also moved now to daily collection. You have to date it. I think the businesses have survived and have become more stronger. So I don't think regulation hurts the business. It probably makes you ask more questions about why and why now. So the timing of some regulations could probably be the discussion, but the need of the regulation probably is never the question. Mr. Revankar, is, uh, is this sort of uh, bringing, at, uh, bringing regulation at par with banks, is it serving the need of what NBFCs sort of uh, were, came into being in the first place, or is it a bit of a drag? The way I look at it is uh, we became NBFC by choice. We did not 
look at arbitrage to become NBFC. So, if at all we wanted to be bank, probably would have applied for a bank in the first instance itself. We chose a segment, we chose a product, we chose a service, we chose customers, and then we became what we are. And over the period we have grown. And as Ramesh said, the regulation, the RBI as the NBFC have grown large. RBI is trying to harmonize and uh, try to uh, increase the level of uh, the what to call regulation to NBFC because NBFC has become large. And also NBFCs have started reaching to, to the customer who otherwise may be uh, serviced by a bank. That's also a possibility. But we continue to remain uh, a servicing to those customers which typically NBFC can service. So I think the, the RBI increasing, uh, or, or not increasing, uh, bringing uh, or uh, in, uh, trying to harmonizing the regulation along with the bank and with uh, pre uh, emptying in the sense uh, RBI has been always informing it in advance one or two or three years. So we are well prepared to move into that and we are uh, getting into it and managing it. So I don't think there is uh, uh, anything disadvantage to NBFC as of now. And all the NBFC have proved that they are able to manage uh, the uh, increased regulation quite well and perform well. So I don't really see disadvantage there. W would I get the same answer if I spoke to smaller NBFCs? Because, I mean, uh, all of you are... So let me actually just bring Alok in. Alok, of course, uh, heads Muthut uh, Home Finance. You, would, you, would you concur or you think... Uh... Yes, see, uh, overall, as uh, my co-panelist said, the regulator always works for strengthening the sector. But then there is also an, a target customer and what was the objective of the company when it was established to service whom. Now, as you rightly said, the very focus and existence of NBFC was brought about to cater to a customer who would normally not get a lending from a bank. I, representing the affordable housing finance industry, we lend to a customer who is at the bottom of the pyramid, who would not be able to walk into an SBI of the world or an ICIC or an HDFC of the world because he is almost, you know, overworked with the bank infrastructure itself, leave alone the documentary requirements. So we lend to a customer who has set up a roadside shop. And yes, today we are measured at par with the bank customers who is probably, you know, cat A plus salaried employee getting a bank credit of a lakh rupees. His ability to repay and the uncertainties which my self-employed, unorganized customer having the willingness to repay but may not have the financial discipline to repay faces are totally different. So to that extent, customer segment is different, realities at the bottom are different. But yes, NBFCs have managed to endure that. We had been given time when the regulation of 180 days became 90 days. We were given a three-year three window to get this right. Now this 90-day window, the circular, we were given a one-year, one-and-a-half-year time. And now it is zero day, it is daily stamping. And now we have to normalize the entire account before it is tagged off as non-NPA. Earlier there was an option of partial collection rollback. So that was working in favor of customers who couldn't maybe repay the entire thing but always had the intention to repay. Now even if they repay in part, they continued to be tagged as an NPA. And as and when they get continued to be tagged as NPA, the mechanism to you know, process the recoveries continue on them. So it causes a little bit hardship in the system, no doubt, for the end customer also. But that's the way it is moving towards financial discipline. So, and companies have come up the curve, but yes, there is a little, you know, discomfort when you go to the prime bottom pyramid of the customer at the customer level. To that extent, I would agree. <coughs> okay, so I did get a slightly different uh, answer, right? I mean, if I, when I put that... Prashant, if I may, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll add one sort of analogy to this, which <coughs> I think is somewhat relevant. Uh, so I have two kids, right? Uh, and growing up, uh, I always thought I was being very lenient on the young one, right? And the younger one got away with stuff that the older one would never get away with. And uh, so my older child was always resentful about this fact that, hey, this guy gets away with stuff, right? Now, my young one is a teen as well, 
uh, and uh, on his 13th birthday, we gave him a phone. And along with that phone came a whole bunch of restrictions about, uh, about his life. Now that guy, the little guy, now believes that life is super unfair, that, uh, that all these restrictions should never exist. It is natural that when you grow older, bigger, and become a bigger part of the system, uh, that restrictions will come in, right? Uh, for individual players, that might feel a little bit painful, but it's a natural evolution of the system, and without that, it will be kind of chaotic uh, in the market. So while it is true that, yes, particularly for the larger NBFCs, the regulatory ecosystem looks more and more like banks, um, it is what it is, and, uh, and you've got to deal with it. It's good for the ecosystem. Uh, you know, we, you, you would all agree that we need more, uh, I mean, I think uh, an earlier panel was talking about how we need more banks. I mean, I think the SBI representative said that we need uh, more financial institutions. Uh, so in that sense, and we need larger financial institutions if you are to be able to finance the needs of the economy, which will grow to, you know, five and then ten, it's a matter of time. Uh, so, I mean, just come in, on, come in there in terms of how the regulatory landscape is and uh, if, it is, if it is all working towards that and what needs to be changed, if anything at all. If India is producing the, among the highest number of fintechs, if it's attracting the maximum amount of private capital, you know, is it right to say that we are restrictive? I don't think so. It's fair to say that we are restrictive. I think it's fair to say that the regulator knows where innovation needs to be allowed. And when they sense that it is becoming large and we need to put controls, they are stepping in. I think. It, that's the fair assessment, uh, the way I would put it. See, uh, we should all know that there are, uh, you know, spectrum of NBFCs and a spectrum of banks. Uh, if you look at the large NBFCs or HFCs, they are bigger than the top five banks, you know, a lot of them. So, uh, and you will find that probably the larger NBFCs are having much deeper penetration than a lot of other banks. So it, it's a spectrum which exists among NBFCs as well as among banks. So to say that banks are made for this segment and NBFCs for the other segment, I don't think so is right. See, we are a large, very large economy. You know, an, our uh, lending book is now close to 140,000. Or one lakh fifty thousand, yeah, yeah, one lakh fifty thousand crore around that figure, and um, and this is on top of that we have the NBFC lending space, which is about twenty percent plus of the total financial services lending book. So if if our lending book is maybe about one eighty one ninety lakh crores overall, and we are saying that for supporting an India's employment or income generation, the economy has to grow at least by 7 to 8 percent, it means that the credit will need to grow at over 15 percent. And if credit has to grow at, at over 15 percent, uh, we know that out of 190, 180, 190 lakh crores, about one third or one fourth will get repaid every year. So that also needs to be lent. So just imagine uh, about 15 percent of 2 lakh crores, that's about uh, 30, uh, 30,000 crores, no, 30 lakh crores, 30 lakh crores, plus the repayment which is happening, you'll have to substitute that also, which is another maybe 50, 60 lakh crores. So you will have to grow your book by close to 1 lakh crores. So do you have enough institutions which can support this growth? And that is why I think we need more institutions which can support this growth and allow for this credit to get delivered to the final uh, leg. Uh, 